Hello everybody, my name is Brandon. Welcome back to Cinefessions, where we talk all things media. So we are quickly approaching one of the best months of the year with July coming up here, because as you guys know, if you're a physical media collector, the Barnes & Noble 50% off sale happens every July and every November, at least historically. I can't say for sure it's happening, but I'm assuming it will because it always does. So what that means is that us physical media collectors now have an excuse to stock up on all of those expensive otherwise uh, Criterion Collection releases that we've been waiting to pick up over the course of the last, you know, however many, six months or so. Uh, so I know Criterion does do their 50% off flash sales as well, but this one is fun because you get to go to the store and, and pick out the movies in hand, which I always enjoy. So I am really excited for the month to come because I'm sure I will be adding a, hopefully not a ton, but a good amount of movies to my Criterion Collection section over there, which is quite full. Um, I will mention, if you guys have not checked it out already, last year I did do a uh, Criterion Collection video, or, or Criterion Collection tour, if you will, where I talked about all of the releases I have from that amazing company. Now, obviously that is over a year old now, so it's not 100%. I have picked up some in the meantime, but uh, I do have a bunch of Criterion movies or videos here on the channel, so definitely check those out if you are interested in seeing that. But uh, yeah, today though, what I decided I th would be a good idea is to talk some recommendations. So uh, this time around, I'm going to be talking some, I have seven categories. So this is really going to be aimed at someone who maybe doesn't have a huge cr a collection of Criterion movies, and they're looking to dip their toes into maybe a genre that they don't know too well, or just something different. And so I figured I would give you guys seven recommendations that I can personally vouch for from the Criterion collection. So uh, like I said, seven different categories, seven different different movies. Now, these are not necessarily the absolute best in these categories, but of course, I haven't seen every Criterion Collection release, so I can only give you uh, my opinions based on my history with the Criterion Collection. So these are just excellent picks within that category. There might be, you know, better ones that I find as the years go on and I watch more of these movies, uh, but these either way are going to be awesome picks. So if you don't have these in your collection, I highly recommend all seven of these end up there at some point, whether it's this July July sale, whether it's a flash sale, or if you wait until November for the other 50% off sale. However you get them, these are ones that I consider must own. So I am really excited about this video, guys. So hopefully you are as well. If you do enjoy this video, please give it a like down below. That really does help out the channel. But with all of that said, let's not waste any more time at all. Let's dive right in to seven Criterion Collection titles I think you should have in your collection. I won't spend a ton of time on each of these, but I will kind of talk about why I selected them. So uh, the first one here, right from the get-go, I want to talk about the staple pick. So this is one that I think should be in every Criterion Collector's collection. I am talking about 1957's 12 Angry Men. This is directed by Sidney Lumet, and it is uh, spine number 591. So this is one that I was introduced to thanks to the Criterion Collection. I watched this for the very first time a couple years ago, and I fell in love. This is a courtroom drama. So basically, we are following these 12 jurors while they are in the deliberation room, I guess is what you'd call it. And they are trying to determine the fate of this young man who is uh, being charged, I guess, with this murder. And so it is a very important trial. Uh, there is a lot at stake for this young man. And so these 12 men are... Uh, talking about discussing if they think this person is innocent or guilty. It is a one location film, which I love. So keep that in mind. This is going to be a slower film, but it is incredibly tense. I, I, it, it is remarkable how, how intense this film is for being all in one location with just these guys essentially just talking to one another. It is just a wonderfully done film that I cannot recommend enough. And looking at the special features here, there are a ton of interviews on this disc. You also get a uh, Tragedy in a Temporary Town from 1956, which is a teleplay. Um, and that was directed by Sidney Lumet and written by Rose as well. So uh, there are just a bunch of special features here. I will hold that up so you can take a look. But this one looks fantastic. The uh, Blu-ray transfer here is beautiful, and I cannot recommend this enough. There is uh, this is one that I feel like will appeal to everyone who just loves cinema, who loves movies. There is so much to love here. The performances are incredible. So the staple pick for me has to be Twelve Angry Men from 1957, spine number 591. 
The next category I want to cover is classic horror. And there are so many different options here, but for this one, I had to go with one that really stood out to me as completely unexpected. I honestly didn't even think I would like this movie, but it is brilliant. This is 1962's Carnival of Souls, and this is directed by Herc Harvey. So this is spine number 63. So it's one of the earlier ones. Uh, this Blu-ray looks brilliant. This is one that you can find virtually everywhere. Unlike those multi-film packs that have really terrible picture quality. They're generally going to be like VHS transfers, things like that. You can find it everywhere because this is in the public domain, but this has a 4K uh, transfer to it here. They digitally restored it in 4K and released it on this Blu-ray, which looks amazing. It is just a, <laughs> it has beautiful cinematography on it. So really the way to watch it is in the best format possible, which right now is on Blu-ray. So that is one of the main selling points here. But this movie is just haunting and it has stuck with me ever since I watched it sometime last year. Um, basically our main character here uh, survives this like drag racing accident that she gets into um, and then eventually she decides to take this job as the uh, a church organist and then it just breaks down from there it is really a psychological horror film it is a matter of uh, are the things she's seeing real is it in her head what is really going on here and just again some of the imagery with this is so eerie and unsettling it is just it's so, it's shocking how much this movie moved me being a, as old as it is and in black and white but it is one you you must see if you are a horror fan so uh taking a look at the special features here there are so many there's an audio commentary from the director on select scenes uh there are like two different documentaries there's the carnival tour which is uh, an update on the film's locations which i'll be honest that's not really my thing i never really got into those on location things after the fact um but there is one that is the movie that wouldn't die from 1989 it's about the the reunion of the film's cast uh and there's just so much in here and of course there's the booklet which actually has a poster on on it, which looks awesome. So this is just one of the greats when it comes to classic horror. And the best way to see this, in my opinion, is with this Blu-ray disc. So this is one that even if it sounds like something you might not like, if you have any interest in classic horror, check it out. You will probably be blown away like I was. So definitely recommend Carnival of Souls as my uh, classic horror pick from 1962, directed by Herc Harvey. The next category is the silent pick. So if you guys follow Criterion, you know there are a ton of silent film options in their catalog. Uh, really like the big three, I'd say in their catalog at least, are Charlie Chaplin, Buster Keaton, and Harold Lloyd. Now, I am a complete noob when it comes to silent films. I've not seen too many of them, but the one I have for this category is one that really stood out to me. It was awesome. Thanks to my TBW game, this is The Gold Rush. So this is directed by Charlie Chaplin. Chaplin, starring Charlie Chaplin, um, and this has the 1925 version on it, but it also, which is the silent version, but it also has the 1942 version, which is a little bit longer, or no, I'm sorry, is actually a little bit shorter, um, but yeah, it's, one of them is silent, the other one is not. I watched the original 1925 version, so the silent version, so that's specifically what I want to talk about here, uh, and this is spine number 615, um, and this is another one that I really didn't know what to expect coming into this because I've not spent a ton of time with silent films. Uh, Charlie Chaplin is someone who I need to watch more of his work, but man, the, like, just the cinematography, the way that this was filmed is amazing given that this was from 1925. Like, some of the things they were able to do, the special effects are amazing to see. It's it's incredible. And so, watching some of the special features on here, I, I really loved the movie when I watched it. I thought it was so funny and just really well done. But then watching the special features on here gave me just a whole new level of appreciation for the work that Charlie Chaplin and crew were able to do with the technology that they had back in 1925. It is really a spectacle to behold. So if you are looking to get into uh, silent films, this is a really great entry level one, I would say, because it just, it does so much to keep your attention with these uh, special effects that they pull off. And this, the humor, Charlie Chaplin is 
wonderful as this uh, silent actor. So I cannot recommend The Gold Rush enough. Uh, looking on the back here at the special features, I will hold that up so you guys can see that for a couple seconds. Feel free to pause. But uh, yeah, so this is another one. This has a 2K digital transfer of the reconstruction, uh, reconstructed <laughs> reconstructed original 1925 silent film. There is the 5.1 surround DTS HD master audio track on here. There is an audio commentary. There's uh, a bunch of, like I mentioned, three programs. So there's a bunch of uh, just cool special features that go behind the scenes. Uh, and it's just, it is something to watch. So I cannot recommend The Gold Rush enough. So that is going to be my pick for the silent film, The Gold Rush, directed by Charlie Chaplin from 1925 and spine number six. 615. Next up is the Western pick. And this is another genre where I need to spend more time with, admittedly, but I only needed one exceptional pick for this recommendation, and I was able to find that. This is from 1956, Jubal. So this is directed by Delmer Daves, and it is spine number 656. So this is one that, unlike the other ones, there's actually not a ton of special features. In fact, there's like nothing on the disc. Uh, there is a 4K restoration of this picture, and it it looks amazing. This is one where if they ever release this on 4K, I would absolutely upgrade because the landscapes are just stunning. It is a Western to its core and it looks great. Um, but there is an essay in here uh, by critic Kent Jones, which I actually read and I thought was a really well done essay. I honestly don't really read the essays in these very often, but because there were so few special features, I really wanted to check it out and I thought it was a excellent essay. So definitely one I would recommend. But uh, this is just, <laughs> I don't know, another one that really shocked me when I watched it. So we are following these, uh, basically like this trio. It's a love triangle of sorts. Um, sort of kind of. There's the bored wife who is played by the beautiful Valerie French. She does an amazing job in this. And then you have uh, Glenn Ford, Ernest Borg Borgnine, and Rod Steiger as this trio that kind of make up the core of this movie along with um, Valerie French. They do such an amazing job. So uh, basically you have the one bad guy who is trying to convince our um, stable owner, our, our farm owner, whatever, the ranch owner, whatever he is, that his wife is cheating on him with this new hired hand, uh, Jubal. And so just kind of crazy things happen throughout this. Uh, they call it on the back, they mention it's like a Shakespearean tale of jealousy. And that's exactly what it is. It is epic in scope, and but done in such an intimate way. I don't know. This is one that I could not take my eye off the screen. Not only is just the visuals like stunning to look at, but the connection, the chemistry between all of these actors is bar none. It is fantastic. So this this is one that, again, if you don't watch a lot of Westerns like me, this is one that anyone can get into. And I loved it. Uh, it doesn't, it's not like, it doesn't feel like one of those old, I don't know, kind of what I think of when I think of a Western. It's just kind of old, slow, and boring. And I know that comes from ignorance, but that's not at all what this is. This is an exciting film. Yes, it is a little bit slow, but man, once it picks up, it just doesn't stop. And that chemistry between these three is amazing. It's palpable on the screen. Cannot recommend this one enough. So my pick for the Western is 1956's Jubal, directed by Delmer Daves, spine number 656. Another category of film that is represented so well within the Criterion Collection is film noir. And so this is my noir pick. And this is another one I watched relatively recently within the last year here. I actually picked this one up during the 2020 July Criterion sale uh, at Barnes & Noble. And this is from 1945, Detour, directed by... Uh, Edgar G. Almer, and this is spine number 966, so a more recent one from the batch here, but uh, this is just a fantastically done crime crime noir or crime thriller. Uh, the black and white cinematography on this looks amazing. The uh, I actually started watching this movie on, I think it was Amazon Prime. They had, a, uh, they had it up on there at one point, and I started watching it, and the transfer was hideous. I couldn't watch it. I had to stop it and move on to something else. So that was the main reason I wanted to check this out because I wanted to see what difference the transfer would be. So this is actually a 4K digital restoration and it is a night and day difference compared to what was likely the VHS transfer that was available on Amazon Prime at the time. Now, I have no idea if it's still up there at all or what transfer is on there, but this one looks so much better. It, it is a beautiful film. So with Detour, we are following our main character here. He is trying to hitchhike from one side of the country to the other 
father. Um, along the way, he comes across this woman who is our main female lead here, and she is just a bad woman. She is mean. And uh, basically, she starts blackmailing him at one point, and then things kind of go crazy from there. Obviously, I don't want to give anything more away because this is one you have to see to believe. Uh, it just goes places that I didn't expect and does it in such a great way. Uh, this is kind of, when I think hard-boiled, this is exactly what I'm hoping to get, and Detour delivers in spades. It is just an awesome film. Uh, it is really short, too. It's only 69 minutes, and it packs a punch in those 65 minutes or 69 minutes, whatever it is. Uh, so this is one that, if you are looking for an excellent film noir option... Detour is right up there. I think this is one that, and I think one of the main reasons I got this was because uh, Quentin Tarantino often referenced it as one of his favorites, and I can see why. It is just, it's awesome. So, cannot recommend Detour enough, as I've said with virtually all of these, but yeah, this is a great film noir option. So, Detour from 1945, directed by Edgar G. Almer, spine number 966, is definitely one you should have in your collection. I'm going to call this next category the modern classic. So uh, though it's not as recent as some of the other options within the Criterion Collection catalog, to me, it still feels more modern. So I'm going to, I'm going to include it here. And if you guys watched my top 10 first time watches of last year, you'll probably remember me talking about this then gushing about it, which I'm about to do now. I'm talking about Ghost World from 2001, directed by Terry Zwigoff. And this is spine number 872. So this is a movie movie that was stunning to me. This is one where as soon as it ended, I wanted to go right back to the to the beginning again and watch it through again because it was it just did everything right in my eyes. Uh, so basically with this one, it is a coming of age story. We are following uh, these two girls played by the amazing Thor Birch and uh, Scarlett Johansson. Uh, they are best friends in high school, but they're graduating at the start of the movie. Um, and then kind of life takes over and they split off in a, l a little bit, as it always happens when you're graduating high school, right? Life is starting to begin, and things just kind of go in different directions. Um, along the way, they meet up with uh, Steve Buscemi, who is just amazing in this. Um, and him and uh, Thor Birch's character, they start becoming friends, and that, again, separates ScarJo a little bit more, um, her character. And so, I don't know, it's just a coming-of-age film that is beautiful. It is hilarious. It is, I don't know, kind of like dark in a way, just dark humor, I guess. Um, but it is so well done. This, of course, is based off of the graphic novel by Zwigoff. And I actually read the graphic novel after watching the film. The graphic novel could not hold up to what I watched in this film. The graphic novel is a lot it's a lot meaner, I guess I'll say. It's a lot more mean-spirited than the film is, which the film has, I don't, there's just like a feeling of hope and there's love within the film that I didn't quite get with the graphic novel. So I much prefer the film. And this to me is just the definition of a modern classic. So this is another one that will appeal to everybody. So if you haven't seen this one for whatever reason, this is a must own. So let's look at the special features here. Another one that has a 4K digital transfer on this. The picture looked amazing. Um, um, there is uh, some audio commentary with Zwigoff on here as well. There is uh, extended ex excerpt from Gumnon from 1965. Uh, so that features the Bollywood number that appears in Ghost World's opening title sequence. I, I must have missed that one. I don't think I watched it. But yeah, so this is another one that has a ton of special features. I actually want to open this one up because it has this really cool comic in here as well. It's really short but it's awesome. So yeah, this is just a fantastic release. One of my absolute favorites that I own in the Criterion collection and another one that I can thank Criterion for releasing because otherwise I might not have seen this film. So I'm so happy I own this one, but uh, just another, this is to me, if I, you know, if there were two that you were picking up from this, it would be 12 Angry Men and Ghost World in my opinion. So the modern, cl or the modern classic pick for me has to be Ghost World from 2001 directed by Terry Zwigoff, which is spine number 872. The final recommendation I have for you guys is what I'm going to call the sleeper pick. So this is one that out of all seven of these options, I think the first six I've just talked about will appeal to anyone who loves movies. This last one, though, is going to be more of a niche audience, I guess, more of a specific audience. So 
You might not love this one, but if you're like me, this is one that you should definitely check out if it sounds interesting. So uh, this is going to be one that I definitely have not talked about on the channel before. This is from 1964, and it's a film I don't really hear anybody talking about. This is Byron Haskins' Robinson Crusoe on Mars. So this is spine number 404. So this is one of my, I want to say, earlier Criterion Collection titles when I really started diving in. Uh, not my first, but maybe in the first couple of years of collecting. I heard about this one and decided to pick it up. Uh, so this is one that is absolutely a slow burn. It is a slow moving movie, but it is sci-fi and fantasy at its best in my opinion. So uh, this is one where our main character has crash landed on Mars and he only has his companion, his pet monkey with him. And so uh, they are trying to survive. But then the question becomes, as you would expect, are they alone? And then things kind of take off from there. And the climax for this is so well done. I just, I love it so much. Uh, it's one that, yes, it is slow, but once you get to that climax, it really picks up and it's just a blast. So this is a movie for people who love slow burn uh, sci-fi fantasy, something like Planet of the Apes. Now, I would say Planet of the Apes does move a little bit quicker than this one does, but uh, either way, the, the reason I like this is probably because I love Planet of the Apes so much. It's just a very similar feel to the movie. So these vast landscapes that are beautiful to look at in, in uh, Blu-ray, I was going to say 4K, but it is a 4K digital restoration, but uh, it was obviously on Blu-ray, so it's 1080p, and they are gorgeous to look at. Uh, I love the way they're able to take wherever they're filming and make it look foreign, make it look like it's a Martian landscape. They do such a wonderful job with that. And then just that like creepy factor that you get with like Twilight Zone episodes, which is something else I would kind of compare this to is if you like some of those Twilight Zone episodes that sound similar, you'll probably enjoy this one just on a larger scale. Um, and Byron Haskins, I should point out, he is a special effects guru. He did Outer, uh, Outer Limits episodes, but he's probably best known for his work on The War of the Worlds, which uh, I watched that one recently as well. Another great option. That one, I didn't love the movie, but I love the special effects in it. Uh, and so something definitely to watch just for that. But yeah, this is just like I said, a very niche pick, but one that I don't hear anybody talk about. So I would consider this one of the more underrated options in the collection that if you like films like this, if you like Planet of the Apes, check this movie out. You'll probably enjoy this one as well. Uh, so like I said, this one does have a 4K digital transfer on it. Um, it is a mono track, but it does keep, it's called like it's technoscope, I believe is what they called it. Uh, aspect ratio of 2.35 to 1. Um, as you can see on the back there, here are uh, some of the other special features. I believe you get the uh, commentary track on there as well, which is always fun with these old sci-fi films. Uh, there is Destination Mars, which is a video featurette by filmmaker and space historian Michael Lennick, uh, which details the science and the dreams behind the film, which is really cool. There is a music video for the Lundin's song Robinson Crusoe on Mars. So uh, I didn't watch that one. It must have been a uh, band that made a song of the same title. Uh, yeah. So I, I mean, this is another one that has a uh, essay book in it as well, like most of them do. So this is just a very worthwhile release, in my opinion. One, I'm I'm certain that I never would have watched if it didn't come out on the Criterion Collection. So very happy to have this one. And it's one that I I think will appeal to a specific audience. But if you are that audience, check this sleeper pick out. So my last pick for today, my sleeper pick has to be 1964's Robinson Caruso on Mars, directed by Byron Haskins, which is spine number 404. All right, guys. So there are seven picks from the Criterion Collection that I personally love and think that you should have in your collection as well, as long as they sound interesting to you. So there are so many more options I could go through. I think I had like double this at first and I cut it down to this many just because I wanted to keep this a little bit more concise. But give me some recommendations down below based on some I loved here. Are there any others that I should check out? I'll let other commenters know some recommendations for these categories. I would love to hear what you guys have to say down in those comments below and let me know what you're planning to pick up this July for the Barnes & Noble Criterion Collection sale. But as always, if you guys did enjoy this video, please give it a like down below and consider subscribing to Cinefessions here on YouTube as I make my march toward 1000. I really appreciate all of your support that you guys always show me, so thank you for that. And like I always say, guys, I don't just talk movies. I talk all things media, be it movies, books, graphic novels, manga, collectibles. If it's media related, I am interested in it. And if you are too, you might consider subscribing. So that is going to do it for today, guys. I just want to say thank you all so much for watching, and I want to encourage you to consume some media today. I'll catch you next time. <laughs> <laughs>